everybody. Um, this video is going to be about uh, my collection of uh, Nikon point and shoot uh, film cameras um, because I've over the years kind of amassed um, quite a, a nice collection. Um, there's still a few I really want to get um, but if you're looking at uh, getting some compact cameras uh, take on holiday when the sun's out down the beach we maybe don't want to risk uh, a nice pro model uh, Nikon F2 or F3 or something you'd rather take a point and shoot it doesn't matter if you drop it and it lands in the sand or or something then it's quite good to get a point and shoot camera uh, you know they focus automatically they've got built-in flash they auto film load a lot of them they auto rewind uh, so it does it all in the one body um, and these days you can pick them up quite cheap because uh, you know people have got their mobile phones and they're taking pictures with those um, but if you're into shooting film then it's nice to not just have a collection of a few really good Nikon SLRs or uh, other makes um, like an F3 or an F2 something like that but it's also quite good to have a few compact cameras so with no further ado I shall run through a quick potted history of uh, Nikon and their point and shoot cameras that they made so the first one, and this has become quite collectible because it is the first cam uh, compact camera that uh, a Nikon ever made, is uh, and it came out in 1983, uh, and it was it's kind of known as the let's see it there it says there the L35 AF. This is the AD, so it's got the the data back um, like that. I actually took the batteries out of the data back because I don't want to use that but it's quite nice to have that data back it means it's got a solid metal back on it makes it a bit more tough but it's a quite a quite a chunky uh, brick of a thing but um, it's got a lovely lens and I've done another video um, on the three versions of this camera because they are quite collectible now um, and I think because it was the first camera that Nikon made in 1983 as I say they really wanted it to be a premium camera kind of uh, for people who didn't maybe want an SLR and so it sold incredibly well and that's why they made so many more cameras after this one um, I managed to actually pick this up quite cheap but it is they have gone up in value so you just have to kind of hunt them down on eBay moments after they've been listed and see if you can do a buy it now or make a low offer if somebody will accept um, and sometimes you get lucky like I did okay so that's the 1983 the first one they made um, and then in around 1984 they made a sort of cheaper version um, and you go like that and opens the lens up like that now this is actually um, it's a 3.5 f 3.5 rather than a 2.8 so okay the lens isn't quite as fast it, uh, you know maybe not as good in low light but if you're taking it down the beach sunny weather this camera is great it's got a super sharp lens and you can get these a lot cheaper um, I would definitely recommend getting it it's a really cool little camera um, and because people are a bit too obsessed with trying to get these uh, L35s if you can get the uh, L135 then you've got a great camera there for a bargain price I didn't pay very much for this at all um, that's from 1984 right 1985 version 2 of the L35 came out the AF2 um, also known as the one touch uh, and opens like that I've got a cover over the, the, uh, that they made that goes over the lens um, the disadvantage of this is it lost the screw thread and it lost the manual ISO that you get on the first one uh, because it's got DX coding so it's a more automatic point and shoot um, so some people prefer the first one the lens is basically um, you know going to take just as good pictures as the as the first version uh, so there's very very little difference um, oh and it takes the same batteries uh, so I would recommend this one just as much as I would recommend the first one that they made. Then in 1985, um, and I appreciate I'm missing out some cameras here in between, but um, what they tended to do was every so often they would they'd make a really good point and shoot um, that did something different. Uh, it was the first to maybe have zoom or first with a wide angle lens, etc. 
Um, so those are the ones I've tried to collect, uh, uh, the really good ones, and they did lots in between that aren't really worth getting unless you only have to pay a couple of pounds. This, though, uh, in 1985, um, is the uh, Nikon Action Touch, and uh, or the L35 uh, AWAF. Actually, I think it came out in 1986, sorry, I'll correct myself there. Um, and this is really, really similar to the L35 AF. It's just, it's completely waterproof. It's got essentially uh, the same lens, the 2.8, 35. So it's just a, built like a tank version. So if you don't mind having a bit of a bigger point and shoot camera, then I would get this. They are, um, though, going up in price. So I think they're about 60, 70 pounds now, but, um, if you sort of do a follow search on eBay, spot one that's just been listed, you might you might get one uh, for a lower price like I did. Then in, uh, where are we now? We're still in the 80s. We've got the Nikon TW Zoom. Um, it's an okay camera. Uh, it was um, apparently the first Nikon compact camera that had a zoom. Um, so that's kind of why it's notable. Uh, if I turn it on, uh, it's a bit noisy, but you've got this uh, rocker on the back and you can zoom. It's pretty noisy, but it's the first zoom in a compact camera. So um, that's pretty good. Um, again, it's a similar size to uh, a lot of these other these early kind of compact cameras, I wouldn't say that you'd fit that in a pocket, but uh, for the time that was that was quite compact. Okay, and then we get on to the Nikon uh, TW two uh, uh, D. Um, so apparently, when this camera came out, they uh, they marketed it as being the thinnest uh, compact kind of pocket camera that had. Um, Sorry, I'm a bit off to one side there, but um, that had ever been uh, made by, uh, by anybody. Um, I'm not sure if that was true, but apparently that's how they marketed it. Um, it doesn't seem that much thinner than any of the other ones, uh, but uh, maybe just a fraction. Um, it's quite a nice camera. The um, other sort of notable features are, if I turn it on, um, you've got uh, the zoom, which I've now, I think you press this button here. And it zooms very noisily. And can you see here, it says soft effect. So when you're taking a picture, you carefully, without putting your finger over the lens, turn the barrel so that this moves over to soft effect. And then apparently for portraits, that would uh, that give you a slightly softer effect, which is a bit of a novelty, but um, not something they've done before. Uh, and I haven't seen it since, actually. Um, but uh, if you can pick these ones up quite cheap, um, that's a nice little camera to have. Um, okay, so where are we up to? The Nikon Zoom 310. Um, what I should say before I um, actually talk about this camera is that um, after they did that last one with the uh, which was meant to be the thinnest and with the soft focus effect for portraits. Uh, Nikon continued to sort of bang out endless cameras that were pretty uh, cheap and nasty, um, this one included, uh, for a quite a long time. Um, and those point and shoots, uh, they got gradually smaller. You can see the difference in size uh, between, between these. That, you know, this would... This, this actually would fit in a pocket, which is great. You know, this is kind of the last of them being huge, um, not really that compact. Um, but uh, for quite a while, um, through the 90s, they were just releasing these steadily. As, um, they were no longer doing like premium point and shoots, but they did actually, um, in 1993, release the Nikon 35 Ti, which is an incredibly premium point and shoot camera. Um, and it's part of the reason I don't own it is because it's in, uh, very, very expensive. I'll try and get a picture of it to come up uh, over this video so you can see what it looks like. 
Um, and then a year later, they did the Nikon 28Ti uh, in 90, 1994, um, which was a 28 millimeter um, version, which is the one to get apparently. It's a bit better built and um, uh, some of the buttons on it uh, have less problems. So that's, and, and you can get it in black, uh, whereas I think the, the Nikon 35Ti is in a kind of uh, goldish color, bronze color. Um, but anyway, so after those two incredibly premium point and shoots, uh, trying to rival some premium compacts that were being made by other uh, film camera companies, they, they got back to making the sort of cheap, nasty stuff. Um, so it's small, it fits in the pocket. I think it was two pounds from a charity shop. So I added it to the collection um, and I picked up the Nikon Zoom 310 AF. Uh, this was around 1993, 1994. So, you know, this was around the same time they were making those two incredibly nice premium uh, TI models. Um, but, you know, if you just wanted something, you didn't want to pay too much, take down the beach, good camera. And it's small as well, which is nice because a lot of those old, those 80s ones uh, were quite big. But as we move into the 90s, they are getting smaller. But then they decided to do something which again this is one I've had my eye on for a while it was another first so it's a little bit bigger than the last one and the Nikon Zoom uh, 700 VR uh, QD quartz date um, so rather than having a data back it does it on the top uh, and basically uh, this was a very very expensive camera when it came out um, because it had vibration reduction built into the zoom lens, which had never been done before. They were, um, from what I've read, they were the first to do it. And it cost them so much money to make with the vibration reduction built in so that you got sharper photos even when you'd um, zoomed. I'll see if I can turn the thing on. You can see it's got <laughs> a fair old zoom on it. So you're zoomed all the way in and the f-stop's going to be... Uh, a bit, uh, it's going to be a bit slower, isn't it? So it's at 105 millimeters. Then that vibration reduction is going to really help you um, with your, you know, if you, your hands are shaking a little bit or a natural vibration. So it was a quite a desirable point and shoot to get in its time. Came out in uh, 94, 95, um, and it was considered a very special camera, but uh, for its time because of that vibration reduction. Um, but as I said, it was very expens expensive. Um, and they also did things like they included a panorama mode. So there's a button here and you flick that over and it's in panorama mode, which if I show you the back, I think I've got a film in here. When you flick that over, it basically just does that to put it in panorama mode. Um, but I've, I've um, shot a few rolls through this and um, it does take very good photos. Uh, and People have long forgotten about this camera and how ridiculously expensive it was. Um, the fact that it cost more than some uh, Nikon SLRs or contemporary makes of SLR at the time. Um, and so now you can actually, if you, and they don't come up very often because they didn't make many of them. Um, they cost so much to, to make, apparently they just, they basically stopped making them. Nikon were making a bit of a loss on them. Um, so uh, if you can ever see one on eBay, I would snap it up. You probably won't even pay very much because people don't realise um, what this camera was. It just gets kind of it's it mixed up with all the other point and shoot cameras of its day. Uh, which actually it's a very advanced camera. Um, okay, let's keep going. And that space to put these right. Um, Okay, uh, we're up to the, uh, well, what happened was, I was about to say, after that last camera, the vibration reduction in it meant that it was so expensive for them to make um, that they had to put the price at a certain point in order to try and make any kind of profit on it. People didn't buy it, it was too expensive, people didn't want to spend that much on a point and shoot. Um, and so they quickly stopped making it, which is why it's harder to get hold of, and they made this instead. Uh, the Nikon Zoom 500 AF, which you'll notice says quartz date on it, panorama, it's got the same sort of zoom range, 35 to 105. So basically this is them going, okay, let's make that camera, but without the vibration reduction in, so it will cost a lot less to make. We can sell it for less 
and it will be at that right price point and people will still want to buy it as a point and shoot because um, people just do want to spend the, the money on the, the one that I just showed you. So this has got the same panorama feature. If I open the back, you can see it's doing the same thing. Oh, um, it's a bit stiff on this one, you'll see like that, and then you have to, but there we go, it's trying to rewind wind on the film. Um, but I mean, it's not really, without the vibration reduction, you know, if you're taking pictures at 105 millimeter, uh, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna be hard to get handhold sharp shots. So there's a reason why this was cheaper to buy. Um, but that was quite an interesting kind of thing that they did there really, where they, they took a camera and they really tried to, to make that, uh, you know, it's a premium kind of camera and with vibration reduction in, and then they had to kind of quickly withdraw it because people weren't buying it because it cost too much to make and replace it with something cheaper. Um, because that's what people want to want a cheap compact. They can just take down the beach. So that was that one. Um, right, so the 90s are over um, and we're moving in to the 2000s. And these are the last three in the collection. Um, and there were lots of, lots of models in between, but uh, these are kind of the, the sort of as we go into the key ones. So we've got the, um, the Nikon uh, 110S uh and uh it came out in 2001 you know your dad probably had one of these they all suddenly were in this kind of gold silvery color um they're a bit sort of forgettable um then you know but because these are fairly recently made they're actually very very capable cameras they're quite small they're packed full of features the uh the lenses are good they don't do prime lenses anymore they you know uh, Nikon had stopped doing uh, nice fast prime lenses a long time ago in point and shoots, but so they all have zooms. But you know these are these these can be picked up very cheap, and um, so and they do take good pictures. So it's not the end of the world. You're not spending a fortune on them. Um, so if you see them in charity shops or car boot sales or on eBay, and they're five ten pounds, then perfectly good camera to get. Um, and then the uh, 70 WS light touch came out in 2002. Um, another kind of just run of the mill uh, film camera, compact camera, but again, small, fits in the pocket, packed full of features, um, zoom lens. Okay, and then in 2003, and you've got to bear in mind digital cameras were around now. They, and Nikon continued to make uh, compact film cameras, and this was the last one. And uh, I think people have kind of cottoned on that this was the very last one. If you do a Google search, you'll see that that the uh, the Light Touch Zoom 100W came out in sort of 2003, and then that March, April that year, they just stopped making film cameras that are compact film cameras. Um, and I've taken this out and. Uh, uh, shot a few rolls with it and it's actually a very very good very sharp compact camera it's got you got to think that that glass in there is you know very modern uh, 2000s glass so uh, it's not that long ago um, and it'll be in pretty good condition because it hasn't had like 40 years to of use or getting battered around or left to get fungus in it so if you get one of these cameras you know you just put a film in you're good to go it truly is a kind of fully automatic point and shoot and I actually really like this camera I think because it's it's small and it just does everything and okay it's not a fast prime but um, it's uh, if I compare it to uh, the first camera that they made um, and the last and you see the size difference um, I think it's quite nice to kind of own the, the, the first camera that they ever made. And the last one, um, from 1983 all the way to 2003. Um, and that was it really. Uh, if there's a point and shoot uh, film camera that they, uh, Nikon made that you really love, uh, post in the comments and let me know. Um, it might be one I haven't got and uh, I'll need to get it uh, in my collection. Um, thank you very much, like and share, and I'll make more.